tell me who you are and um, what you do. So, I'm uh, Steve Mottemeyer uh, with Collins Warman, a consulting firm in Seattle. Yeah. And I'm uh, in the United States and yeah. I'm uh, working for the International Water Association on their Cities of the Future program, helping them uh, develop that program. Mm -hmm. And it's what it's about is what is it going to be like to live in cities in the future and can we make conscious choices now about how we live or are we just going to see what happens and I think part of the the uh, exciting part about this is that we're saying that there are some cities that have the capacity to look out in the future and to think about the ways that they invest in their infrastructure and the way they make livability happen and the reason the water industry would care is water is one of those fundamental under, underlying segments of human life and natural life on the planet. And we've tended to think of water as a, as a, as a resource to drink, but then it's a waste product to get rid of. And yeah. when you start looking at the new ways that cities can be designed, where rain becomes not only a resource for in the city uh, for drinking, but also the way that it can be used for... Um, the stormwater systems could be beautiful vegetated parts of the cities that provide beauty and urban you know relief from urban heat island habitat in the cities so it water then starts becoming a, a thread that links the city with nature it it makes urban living more satisfying and it actually is can be way more environmental in the sense that that the investments that we make in infrastructure can um, be more cost effective in the sense that they really address all of the all of the parts of, of what it takes. So for instance, the way we currently design our infrastructure systems, there's you know what they call an economics externalities, things that aren't counted in the math about what it costs for something. Yeah. So we it's okay to pollute the air because oh that somebody else worries about that. Well we know that that doesn't work anymore now we've got global warming issues. It's okay for pollution to go downstream. I don't have to worry about it. Well, that doesn't work anymore. The water's getting all polluted. We're losing fish species and we're losing ecosystem functions. You know, parts of nature are getting unraveled. So if you say, well, we can't afford those externalities anymore, uh, we can only really afford the things that make urban living um, delightful and charming. And when you think about the role that water can play, uh, it's it's a, in a way it's a sacred substance to many people. It's it's the the, the f force of life, and it can enliven our cities rather than be something that we hide in pipes bringing in and hide in pipes going out. And so I think I think it's a huge opportunity to reimagine the way we live in cities. Uh, so that's what I'm excited about. That's really interesting. It sounds very much to me like you know let's introduce or reintroduce the ecosystems back into the cities right well yes and we have those those processes that happen the things that that happen in nature um, still go on um, and they can go on in the city and this is a interesting thing in if you have vegetation near your you know hospital window your recovery time is quicker when you go to the hospital if you have vegetation near where children live they actually learn better in school. If you have vegetation um, on your roofs or on the walls of buildings, they soften the urban heat island effect and they also help with water quality and water flow. So vegetation is an evaporator. It, the way that plants grow is they evaporate um, water vapor off their leaf surfaces that creates negative pressure inside the plant that then pulls nutrients and water in from the ground and then it releases it to the air. So that pumping that plants do, they turn water into water vapor, creates a cooling process. And so it's literally an air conditioner for the city. Yeah. That's why we have urban heat island because we've removed a lot of the vegetation and a lot of the water and we've lost evaporation which makes cities more livable. Yeah. So reintroducing plants, um, via water um, is, a, is a, a fabulous way to make cities more livable and uh, more gratifying. Part of it too is when you think about wastewater, um, you know, we use the water and then it goes off in a pipe somewhere. Well, if, if it, we send it off in a pipe really distant um, and treat it at a treatment plant or just release it into the environment, there's a lot of nutrients that are lost that are in the wrong place. And there's also um, 
a lot of water supply that's lost. For example, in Seattle, the city that, that I live in, there's twice as much rain that falls on the city as the city needs to drink. But yeah. all of that rain that falls on the city is and not drunk at all. Goes to the city. Yeah, and we and actually Seattle pulls it from the mountains all the way into the city. So you start looking at, gee, we have this fabulous resource falling all around us, and we've turned it into a very expensive urban drainage problem. And why not look for ways to incrementally make a shift over to where cities are thinking about their role, not only as great places to live, but their role in nature um, as part of the, the function of the planet. And it's not just a, you know, I'm inspired by the romantic part of this, you know, the, um, uh, the nature and the city and all that. But here we are at the water industry, you know, and here we have people that supply pumps and pipes and implement all this stuff. And then it's a big business worldwide. Uh, there's billions of people that don't even have any of the, the very least resources that we would hope and billions more that have resources. So it's an actually a big business, but as a big business and as a, an important part of what it takes to be alive, there are smart ways for us to transition over the next hundred years to cities that are much more in tune with where, the, where they are on the planet. And it doesn't mean that we throw out the systems we have, but do we keep replacing them as they have been, or do we really look for opportunities to, imp, to nest in some of these newer technologies and newer strategies for living in cities? You know what? This sounds fabulous. So um, you tell me again who you are and who you work with. I'm Steve Mottemeyer. I um, work for um, Collins Warman, a consulting firm in Seattle. And, and our practice is to help s cities or uh, large property owners develop new proto prototypes of what urban living could be like. Uh, so we work with larger parcels. And I'm also a consultant working for the International Water Association, leading their Cities of the Future program, which is just being launched uh, this week. Excellent. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you.